roasted cow manure even after planting. You can come back a month or two later and spread black cow on top of the soil around the root zone of a shrub or tree, or spread it evenly over a flower bed or rows of vegetables in your garden. Black cow releases nutrients slowly. It won't burn tender roots because it's fully composted. Look for the bright yellow and black bag at your favorite nursery or garden center. And visit the website, too, at blackcow, spelled with a K, dot com. Black cow, the mature manure, black cow. Ocala's Information Station, 1370 WOCA. Ocala! Seven minutes after 11 o'clock, our next guest does not realize that her topic is so close to our hearts, but she's going to find out right now and find out why. You and I, Robin, have been involved with the uh, Children's Craniofacial Association for several years now, and uh, last summer I went to a, a luau picnic in Orlando, and I got to meet with them, and I brought my video camera so that I could kind of talk to them about it. And if you don't know what craniofacial is, it's a, uh, I don't know if you call it a disorder. I'm not really sure what you call it. Uh, but the children are born with, with severe facial deformities that can be somewhat altered by surgery, but, but never really so that the children look the way a child would look if they didn't have that, okay? That's the best way to say that. But they're beautiful children in every uh, every way, and, and they, they're playful, and they, they laugh. And, and, and one of the eye-opening moments was when I was interviewing one of the moms, <clears throat> and she said she had heard about this organization. She had heard about these luau picnics. She had heard about these opportunities to get together with other children who also have this particular condition, and they were afraid to bring their daughter because they were afraid it would be too much of a shock for her to see people, other children who had the same thing. And it was quite exactly the opposite. She said it couldn't have been the best thing. It, 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 there couldn't have been a better thing for them to do to show up at an event like that. And she said, and you want to know something? I think the therapy was more for us, meaning the parents, than it was for the children. And Yeah, she's very wise. And I'm parent. telling you something. Was nice. I was at this picnic, and I didn't feel like I was at a picnic that was any different than any other picnic I've ever been to with kids throwing Frisbees, uh, kids swimming, kids having fun with, uh, you know, just with whatever toys were there. There was mm -hmm. one kid in a Flintstone car yeah. that was r running all around the place. Um, I mean, there's so many examples that we could bring up. We have a very close friend, Doug, and many of you know Doug, who's got Down syndrome. He's 54 years old, I think, something like that. And I've known him since he was 11. His mother is the reason he is independent right now because all of his life as a child, she treated him no differently, mm -hmm. right? Dr. Rita Eichenstein is on the phone. She is a renowned psychologist, a pediatric neuropsychologist, an expert in the field of child development and special education. And she's written a book. It's called Not What I Expected, Help and Hope for Parents of Atypical Children. Dr. Eichenstein, I hope I have uh, illustrated for you why I think you're bringing a topic that is close to our hearts as much as any other topic we've ever had. Good morning, oh, Doctor. Oh, absolutely. Good morning. Thank you for being on the air with us. Where are you? I'm in Los Angeles. Oh, my goodness. Everybody's in L.A. today. Yeah, isn't that Like great? our third guest out in California. Thank you for getting up early to be with us. Not a problem. It's a pleasure. So uh, do, are you familiar with the, the cranial face? You know, their, their, their next uh, outing is actually in June out in your area. Really? Yeah. yeah on the beach. Wow. Yeah, they're going to mm -hmm. uh, Pomona Beach. Or Pom I can't remember where they're going. Yeah, something like something that. Something with a P, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, the actress Cher is hosting it, so the singer Cher. Singer actress. Right. Yeah, yeah. So uh, tell me about the book, Not What I Expected. Is have you, in working with parents, the ones like I described, are, are they sometimes the ones who need the the therapy? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I specialized in children, and those of us who go into the field, any kind of field, working with children, we're trained to study children and child development and the brain of the child, and in particular neuropsychology, we're psychologists who also study the developing brain, and a lot of the disorders that we work with are what I call the invisible disorders. Um, they don't necessarily show on the outside, such as ADHD, 
autism, anxiety, learning disorders, dyslexia, but also the disorders such as you mentioned also have corollary, could have other comorbid issues alongside that that are unexpected or in some cases expected. But the, the big point is that after a while of doing what I've been doing, I realized that there's an invisible patient in the room, if you will, and that invisible patient is the parents. Interesting who observation, are going yeah. Through, going through so much of their own emotional turmoil. There's disappointment. There's all sorts of feelings, and those feelings deserve to be recognized you know what's interesting, uh, in, in, and, and you're right, there, there are some that are invisible. We know a few autistic children who, who are visually no different Gorgeous. than the other children. Yes, right. yes. Mm-hmm. So, so the, in, in the children's cranial, when I went down there, I mentioned that I had a camera. And I was, wasn't sure if they wanted me to take pictures of their children. Well, it was exactly the opposite. They loved it. They wanted the pictures, you know. And, and since then, I've become friends with them on Facebook, and they're always posting photos of their children. So... I really think that you're onto something that that they probably couldn't have gotten to that point without some way to grasp what they were having to yeah. deal with. It's a journey. It is absolutely a journey through a series of phases um, that are not different from the grieving phases, although the grief is very different. It's small g, not, not a huge grief. Obviously, you have a beautiful child. Yeah, parents right. love their children. They're proud of their children. And when I point out the gifts that children have, they're quick to accept those gifts. And But internally, there's still a series of emotions that they go through that they feel bad about. Why am I such a terrible person? Here's my beautiful child. Okay, nobody's perfect. But I feel shame. I feel disappointment. I feel like maybe I did something wrong. Did I do anything wrong, doctor? What did I do? Did, what did I eat during pregnancy? What? Oh, what? wow. Yeah. Oh, especially the moms. The moms really can guilt themselves. Really? Um, I, the- oh. I, I, I met a dad at this event, and he he was crying as he was talking to me. I mean, mm-hmm. he obviously loved his daughter. It was a, it was a beautiful oh, sure. thing, really. But the, the important thing is that there are so many atypical children, and the reason I use the word atypical... It's a great word, by the way. Thank you. It's not that... It's when you say special needs, you think of a child sitting in a wheelchair that can't walk, talk, hear, or listen. And atypical means that this can be a in very invisible disorder. It can be something that only you know about. It can be a child that actually doesn't have a diagnosis, but that is difficult, quirky, annoying, or otherwise very different than what you expected. You know, it could be a gay child, too. You just, we're learning so much about this whole world. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it seems to me, though, that sometimes children accept other children before adults will accept another child or another person who is, quote, unquote, different. And then as the other, quote, unquote, uh, normal child is growing up, that their parents sort of... Uh, uh, you know, uh, coerces them to believe in one way when they're not supposed to do that. It goes against their own grain of caring. Right, and it's important that diversity begins at home, acceptance of diversity, because the truth is is that diversity is common to the human species. We are all atypical in our own way, and accepting that each child has gifts to bring to this world as well as something that makes them a little different is really the human experience. That's wonderfully said. Uh, we need to take a little break, and then we'll be right back. I, th- this time is just going too quick. Uh, Dr. Rita, I can, Rita Eichenstein, when I come back, I'm saying your name right, correct? Yes. I can stop. Okay. We'll be right back with Dr. Rita Eichenstein. When we come back, this is WOCA Ocala. The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident. Times of sun and clouds today with a shower with thunderstorm in spots this afternoon and this evening. The high 84 at the coast, 91 inland. Partly cloudy overnight, though 64 inland, 70 at the coast. For tomorrow, times of clouds and sun with a shower and thunderstorm or two around at the afternoon. The high 84 at the coast, 89 inland. For Sunday, mostly cloudy with a couple of showers and a thunderstorm. The high 81 to 80. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Joe Lundberg. 
Holidays and memories go hand in hand. Why not make this Easter even more memorable by serving a honey-baked ham and delicious sides and desserts? Yum! Yes, the coconut and lemon cream cakes are back. Enjoying the family, egg hunts, and just being able to relax without having to spend hours in the kitchen will make your day a memorable one. Hop on over to Honey Baked Ham. Call and place your holiday order today, 861-0011. That's 861-0011. Honey Baked Ham, behind Best Buy. All right, 16 minutes after 11 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. So uh, in, in thinking during the break, um, I, I was I was trying to imagine what the parents have to go through as the child gets older. And uh, so let's continue our conversation with Dr. Rita Eichenstein out in L.A. right yes, now. Yes, she is. It's probably beautiful. It's beautiful here right now. The rest of the country is not doing too good, but we're doing good. Yeah, we're doing wonderful. <laughs> uh, doctor, I was thinking about this. Um, when a child is, is, is brand new, the the children play together. They probably don't make fun of each other a whole lot at the very, very young ages. But then as they get older, somebody who's a little different gets made fun of, whether it's because of physical things or, or mental things or talent things. You know, maybe they're not quite as talented for one reason or another in one thing or another. And the, and then dating age. One, one, of the, one of the young ladies we met uh, at the uh, this luau thing I mentioned was a teenager ready for prom years, you know, and she didn't have she didn't have the looks of of her uh, uh, classmate girls that are that are the queen girls, you know, mm-hmm. but she had the personality, and and the, the beautiful thing is she found a boyfriend, you know, which is awesome. Yeah, I mean it, sometimes it's a leveling factor. I don't know, but the parents sometimes have to put up with nobody likes because I'm different or they're bullying me because I'm different. So I'm guessing the book addresses the different ages. Uh, Well, the book is more designed for parents to go through their feelings because I believe that parents are the number one cheerleaders and supporters for their own children, and parents need to take care of their own needs in order to fully open-heartedly handle and raise this very special child that they have been gifted with. Um, And in terms of all the other, the stigma, the pecking order issues in um, the competition, I encourage parents in my book to be very proactive after I take them through the stages because parents, you know, can get trapped in denial and anger in bargaining with the diagnosis and depression is a big trap, feeling isolated, feeling depressed. I encourage parents to move into what I call active acceptance, which isn't just serenity. It is really going out and becoming a spokesperson and in advocating for this particular disorder, getting to be part of the PTA, bringing the awareness to other parents, inviting guest speakers. And so your child's particular disorder should be very familiar with the parents in your community, with the school, with the teachers, and if it's not, make it front center headline so that everyone understands what it is that your child has and also the gifts that go along with this disorder. You know, there's pros and cons to everything, but when you become an active advocate who takes charge of the situation, there's less chance that your child will be ostracized or stigmatized. Do you also encourage uh, spirituality within each of the parents? Is that a comforting factor there? It certainly is. It absolutely is. You know, there's research that shows that families that are affiliated with the spiritual community actually do much better. Uh, in terms of coping with an atypical child. And children who grow up in a spiritual community do much better socially also when they're different. Um, and as well as digging inside yourself and finding that spiritual connection. I talk about it in my bargaining chapter, the spiritual supplicant becomes quite a powerful um, move into and through these emotional uh, phases. Does does a parent, a new parent of an atypical child, benefit from spending time with the, a parent of a of an atypical child who might already be an adult? Would that conversation be beneficial? 
Oh, well, you just took my last chapter right out of the book where I yeah. interview <laughs> parents of already adult children so they can give perspective about where they've gone, how they've gotten there, and how they've grown through the process. And yes, it is the most comforting thing to know. Does the, does the atypicality, I don't even know if I'm using the right word, but it does the thing that makes the child atypical uh-huh. have, to, have to be the same? Or, or would the parent of an adult Down syndrome child, for example, be able to talk to the parent of, a, of an ADHD child and, and, and have the same effect? You know, that's interesting. I think to some degree it it would be okay because parents don't have to match in terms of their, everyone carries around their own little uh, package of sorrows and it doesn't have to match exactly. But in case of a Down syndrome, I definitely encourage parents to become uh, active in the Down Syndrome Association and to definitely meet other parents with similar issues, although no two children are exactly alike. Do you counsel the parents who have more than one child and one child is atypical that they need to also pay attention to the other children in the family and not just devote most of their time to the atypical child? Well, that's easier said than done, but yes, siblings are easily ignored um, because the neediest child, you know, gets the most uh, attention. Mm -hmm. But I hate to put guilt trips on parents. They're dealing with so much already, and uh, it, it, but it is difficult. The siblings do get um, ignored a little bit, and every child needs comfort and attention and validation. So, so in, in in having time for yourself to to, to kind of you, you know whenever we talk about caregivers of anybody, um, we always talk about the the caregiver needing to have a little bit of tender loving care also, um, and, and I would imagine that just getting out and and you know having a night at a movie or something like that, it's got to work wonders in some cases. Very important, very critical. Uh, I talk about a self-care menu, how parents can develop a self-care menu. If you only have five minutes, well, that's your appetizer. Create a menu of appetizers. What would work? If you need a salad section, you have 20 minutes. What, do you, what could you do in 20 minutes that would help? And sex. then the main that's course. A, sex is 20 <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. And then, of course, there's the dessert section. (laughs) 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 What about about the fear of having another child? I I know that that one of the young ladies I met at the same place, Mm -hmm. she had a child who actually died from the, the... the the uh, ch- children's cranial the craniofacial syndrome yes. yeah she actually mm-hmm. died and so I'm I'm imagining that she's afraid to have another child I don't know but but that would seem to be well you know you're pointing out something really important and that is the trauma of parenting when it, it goes along not what you expected is very deep and this is an invisible epidemic is. And that's been unaware until now is the trauma that parents go through. It's uh, we all know about the children with the rising rates of diagnoses, but what we're not realizing now is what parents are going through because they are taking care of these children. We have a friend who has a uh, daughter who has special needs. She's 11 now, and uh, her and her husband had uh, adopted a. Uh, young boy who's about eight right now who also had special needs but they went through the adoption process to adopt him uh how do you help the parents who who adopt special needs children when some of the other members of the family might say why did you adopt a special needs child well you know it's interesting i do see lots of adopted kids and it's always interesting i'd love doing the assessments on the adopted kids because to some extent they're a black box there's no genetic pattern to think about Um, we don't know what to expect and parents that's why i do testing and assessment to see where is this child hanging on all the different criteria in terms of intelligence and academics and processing and personality. Um, To some extent, it's a little easier because parents went in knowing that they were going to have um, challenges, 
Also, it's a little easier because parents don't blame themselves when it's an adopted case. It's not genetic. It's nothing they ate during pregnancy. It's, okay, this is what it is. Yeah, There's a yeah. little less mourning involved. You know, there's yeah. this an interesting thing I think I'm picking up on, uh, Doctor, and it sounds, it's, tell me if I'm hitting on something here. You started out working with children. You noticed the needs of the parents, and then somehow... I don't know what the word is, osmosis or something, through through some kind of a, uh, osmosis. In helping the parents, it actually also helps the child. Am I right about that? That it, it kind of is a big full circle kind of a thing? That's absolutely correct. That is absolutely right. My goal is to have these little kids that I see become happy and healthy 25-year-olds. And we can't do, or and beyond. And we can't do that unless we also consider the parents. They're at least 50% of the equation sitting here in the room being completely ignored by everybody. Um, and all the focus is on the child. Indeed, the parents' focus is completely on the child. And when I started to ask parents this question, which is, how are you? How are you doing? How are you coping? They first say, oh, we're fine, we're fine. It's all about the child. So even parents tend to ignore their own feelings. I, th I think you hit on something really important. Yeah. And that's what's really good about your book is that you give the parents the reassurance that they need, that they're doing everything that they can to provide a, a great and loving home for the child and allow that child to grow. That's right. And it's not only about taking care of the child. It's also about taking care of yourself. Well, this is a very important book, it sounds like. I want to make sure the listeners can get it. It's called Not What I Expected, Help and Hope for Parents of Atypical Children. Uh, Dr. Rita Eichenstein is the author. And um, so let's find out how to get the book. Do, do you have a website? Uh, yes, you can go to notwhatiexpected.info. Okay. Or you can go to Amazon or Barnes and Noble or ask your local independent bookstore to stock it. It's not what I expected. Not what I expected. Dot info. Let's see if it shows me something that I expected. <laughs> 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 oh, there you are. Oh, you're a pretty lady. Now, oh, that's a handsome book cover too. Wow, nice. Um, well, th this is. Some, I, I really think you've hit on something that I don't know that anybody's ever talked to us about the parents mm -hmm. before. So I think you've hit on something really important. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, I agree. And you and okay, and I'm looking at okay, so not what I expected that info and is it uh, the other one Dr. Rita Eichenstein.com is that also Right. Okay. Yeah. Take you to the same place? Probably at this point it does. We're still sorting through the all the different website options here. <clears throat> Okay. All right. Uh, well, thank you for being on the air with us, and thank you for what you're doing. Uh, you're making the world a way better place, and I think I'll share this book with the people that I know at the Children's Craniofacial Association. That would be terrific. I, I really think that they. I, I think I learned something by talking to them as well. So, yeah. so it was an interesting conversation. I was looking forward to this conversation uh, ever since I knew you were coming on, Doctor. Thank you for being on the air with us today. Thank you. It was a pleasure. All right. We'll take a little break, and we'll be right back. Ready to go. I'm Pam Puso. A bittersweet day at Fort Hood. Purple Hearts and Defense of Freedom Medals are being awarded to the victims of the 2009 shooting rampage. The reason this took so long, you remember Congress did have to pass a new law changing the criteria of what it took to receive a Purple Heart. And the victims of this tragedy are now forever grateful. Fox's Casey Stiegel, 13 people.